Bobby Cheating video, and today we're going to talk about. Actually, I'm. I think I'm out of ideas. There are a lot of videos into this. I'm not sure I've got anything. What? What? What's this? Thank you. Okay, well, I guess we're going to talk about putting this thing together, which means it's time to talk about doing really big projects. All right, so uh, intro over. Fun times. Now let's talk about how we put together and paint a project this big. This is the Warmaster Heavy Battle Titan from Adeptus Titanicus. Uh, they were nice enough to send me one early, so thank you very much for that. And I thought, <clears throat> what a great chance to talk about how to do really, really big projects like this. Uh, now, in this case, I'm doing a big giant robot, which has particulars and concerns about it. But, of course, the same is going to be true for anything. If you've ever opened a box like this and seen a bunch of sprues and a bunch of complexity like this, you know where you're living. And where you're living is, oh boy, how am I going to tackle all of this? There's so much to do. And as you can see from these sprues, it's a lot of little parts, little pieces. The instruction booklet is the equivalent of a novel. It goes on and on and on. And that's because, you know, this thing is meant to be some giant, giant knight, right? stories and hundreds of feet tall even though it's actually uh, it's about the same size as a regular imperial knight uh in the 40k game so it's quite big so in this video i'm going to take you through building painting and doing everything i do with this titan you're going to see both how i attack big projects like this and also how to paint this particular thing individually so it's kind of a twofer uh but what we're going to do is we're going to start by breaking it all down. All right, so if we're going to do a big project, the first thing you have to do is plan, right? Uh, it's, the reality is when you're painting a normal figure, you can pretty much just roll into it. But with a thing like this, we got to break it down. So let's talk about what we've got here. So we've got a big robot. Okay, fine, cool. Now, you know, whatever you have, you have. In this case, I got a big robot. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course clean and assemble no problem that one's easy that one's obvious that's where we start all our projects two uh we're gonna go ahead and we've got to uh we're gonna make the skeleton uh is gonna be a sub assembly we're gonna do the armor plates that's gonna be sub assembly two right and we're going to put those armor plates into a position where we can work with them. All right. So we're going to uh, basically work with, uh, work on skeleton. So that's metals, oil wash, right? Details. Five, we're going to work on armor right so that's going to be painting uh freehand and then details right and then finally uh we're going to put it all together but wait we forgot something what did we forget ah that's right, we forgot six, the base. Can't forget the base on a big project. So then seven is going to be assemble. So the key here is logically think about what you're gonna do and then you can go in on each one of these and you can say, okay, what is my plan here? What is my plan here? That's where we come to research. So all of this, we are going to research. Very important step. Okay, so. So we start our research where we start most things. We're gonna look over on Google. Now, this is Adeptus Titanicus setting. I don't really know that much about it. So I figured, okay, let's go read up. Let's look at what our factions are. What are our options? 
So I go down here and look, and you know, I scroll through the page for a while, see that they're divided into loyalists and traitors. Okay, cool. Well, I definitely wanna make something traitor. I wanna make something chaosy. So I scroll through the page until eventually I come to these guys. Legio Certurvora. I don't know how to pronounce words. But I was like, Fire Masters, Legio Infernus. Oh, that seems cool. That's a cool symbol. I like that. So I kind of read about their story, you know, see if I like that, right? Get through some of that. And then most importantly on this page, we scroll all the way down and then we get images, things like that. So, you know, we can look at cool images from various places and see exactly what some different paint schemes are, stuff like that, right? What their symbols are. Yeah, neat stuff. Now, I actually looked at probably like 20 different houses before I came to this one, or legions, or legios, or whatever they're called. But this one struck me. And that's one of the places you begin. You start looking out in the world, and you look at other people who've painted miniatures like this, and you say, what of these grabs me? What has a cool narrative? What has a cool look? What has a cool image? What do I feel like is going to be fun for me to paint? Whether I'm doing something organic, like a big monster, or whether I'm doing something uh, more scale modeling like this with a robot, I start from just inspiration of other painters, of the narrative, of the art of the world. Draw on everything you can. There's not always gonna be you know, traditional art for you to draw on when you're dealing with big monsters or big giant robots, but you can find somebody who's done something similar. It shows up in the lore, in the books, use those resources draw inspiration from them and use that to formulate your own scheme all right enough research it's time to get into this bad boy so as i said this thing has a lot of pieces so uh relax to the dulcet images of me in hyperspeed assembling this thing <laughs> uh so this process is obviously hopefully familiar to all of us right you'll notice that i'm working through each piece trying to go in order i'm cleaning as i go uh, i am using sprue goo to attach everything uh, if you're not familiar with making sprue goo that is melted sprue or plastic bits uh, melted into tamiya extra thin i have a video on it you can see that up in the corner right now if you want to go check that out it's what i actually use to assemble miniatures uh, plastic miniatures makes it so easy because some of it squishes out and you can wipe it off and, and there are no gaps so it makes your sort of gap filling type of thing non-existent which is great you can also just fill gaps with it directly which is fantastic this is a lot of pieces and the key is to be organized and so i'm going through in order now every so often here you might notice a little highlighted number or a highlighted point in the instructions I'm highlighting any place that I skip. And the reason I might skip something is because it's telling me to put an armor plate on, but I already have my building plans that I wrote down and I'm not putting the armor plates on. I'm gonna leave them separate because that'll make it much easier for me to paint, right? But I wanna remember where that piece is that I didn't assemble. So pretty important not to forget it. So I just highlight it in the instructions. So later on, when I do put this bad boy together, I can easily go back and reference it. The other thing I will say as you're going through and attaching this stuff, the reason I like using something like sprue goo is because then if you mess something up, especially with something as big and complicated as this, you can pull it apart pretty easily and change it before the glue sets. Um, but the important part is just to work your way through the process make sure everything is clean scrape every mold line you can take the time to sand the things down to get them clean it pays a lot of dividends later when you don't have to go back and find that thing in the middle of your work
All right, so now it's time to work on the armor. And this is pretty simple. We're gonna put the armor in what I call position zero. Effectively, with big robots, you can put these armor pieces into the locations they'll ultimately fall as though the miniature was laying flat. What that means is as I paint these things, work on these things, highlight them, and do everything I'm going to do, I always know how they sit in relation to each other. I keep the lighting consistent. I keep the entire composition of the piece consistent. It's a good thing to do regardless of the type of miniature you're doing. Keep those sub-assemblies ordered so that way your entire piece stays coherent. All right, now it's time to work on the skeleton. I began with a zenithal of true metals. You can see the video for that up in the corner. Uh, it's steel all over, silver from above, black ink from below. Very easy. All Vallejo metal color, of course. And now it's time to give it a wash. And not just some acrylic wash, because acrylic washes just ruin metals and make them look like trash. Uh, when I want this thing to have some shine to it, like it's real steel. So we're going to use an oil wash. Uh, I've made this out of Shadow Brown, a color from Optilung 502. Uh, I also have a video on making oil washes, and I use it on a different metal skeleton. You can see that up in the corner up there. The nice part about oil washes is they have a very long drying time, taking usually about a full day to dry. So I can be messy with this. I can slop it all around, get it everywhere I want, make sure it's all down in the cracks. And because it's not water, it's oil, uh, it has a much stronger capillary action and will flow everywhere. Then I'm going to let that sit for about 30 minutes come back with makeup sponges and wipe it off. That will allow me to have nice, deep, dark recesses, but clean, shiny, bright metal. All right, now back to some sped up footage. Uh, so we now we're gonna go ahead and detail the metal. I wiped it all down. This is a day or two later. And now we're gonna do all the rest of the details. Uh, the key with any big metal solid chunk like that is you don't want to leave it boring. If it's all steel, it's really visually boring. But you don't need that much to spice it up either. There just needs to be things to draw the eye. So here I'm picking out minor details, things that interest me. There's no guide, there's no exact right thing to do. But I'm turning them bronze, and I made my, my, made my bronze out of my Green Stuff World mix of two to one bronze to copper. And so you see I'm just working those metals in, finding interesting things to pick out there. I also used a little airbrush just to shoot some uh, shadow and darkness and sort of grease up in there, just some brown color. Now it's time to work on the big old plasma guns. These are a huge piece of this machine. These took forever, lots of blending and glazing back and forth. The key with a big piece like this, like the plasma guns, is focus on these things. This is a huge eye-catching part of the miniature. It's its massive weapons. There's the bright brass bronze caps on them. These are bright blue. Know when something is important because it's drawing the eye and spend the time on it. I probably spent five hours working these things back and forth and it was worth it because they're gonna be the first thing people notice. So spend the time on your big things on the things people notice. So now it's time to work on the armor plates. And again, you can see all my armor plates are laid out in position zero as they will appear on the miniature to help me out. Uh, I'm spacing out sort of the colors that I want to work with. So everything that I'm highlighting, uh, or sorry, shading brown here, I'm eventually going to want to turn orange uh, or yellow or something like that. So I first start by warming them up, turning them away from the cold zenithal. So I lay down a color of light rust and then ivory and then yellow over all of those parts, even if they're gonna turn orange just for additional vibrancy, and then the ones I actually specifically want to be orange, then I lay down uh, a nice layer of the uh, contrast Griffhound orange uh, mixed in with a little bit of ink. The rest I just painted black with a little bit of gray highlight. Uh, now comes the long part. I won't lie, I, I am sad how bald I am, but that's okay. This is the truly lengthy part of this adventure. It is doing the little armor plates. I would say total, there's probably about 60 hours or so put into the armor plates if you want to know kind of the scope of this project. You certainly wouldn't have to do something like that. But uh, each flame being traced individually, and this is just the first layer of freehand. There's going to be more on top of that. So I have to go through with a sharp brush 
trace all of these little patterns out uh, and keep going. So once all the flames are done, now it's time to give those flames some color uh, because obviously just white flames aren't anything. So when we're painting freehand flames, one of the easiest ways to do that is to start by turning them all yellow. Uh, the yellow ink is so weak, and I use Vallejo Game Ink Yellow. It's so weak, it won't show up over the black. So even if you miss and kind of get in the area where you shouldn't be, not a big deal. So that's how I always start. Just give them a nice yellow coat, warms the whole thing up, and it's super easy. Next, I take some of that same Griff Hound Orange, and I just, you know, so I'm working upside down on the flames, right? Because I'm pulling that orange toward the fire, right? Uh, I start with a little bit of your Dollar Rowney FW uh, orange ink, flame orange, and then I mix in more and more Griffhound. Uh, then on top of that, at the top of the flame, we do a little hull red. Once all that's done, then I did the longer pieces of freehand, which took far too long and were far too delicate to ever put on any kind of camera, so I apologize. But if you want to know about how to do detailed freehand, guess what? I have a video and it's up in the corner right now, and it happens to be on things like knights. Now comes one of the longest, most boring parts of this entire thing, which is tracing out all of the metal brocade and gold around the edge. The key here is two things I'll say. Trace them out carefully, use a sharp brush, and if you make a mistake, clean it up immediately. In between all of these levels, I was varnishing a lot. Make sure you varnish frequently throughout the process. My varnish for all of that is a 50-50 mix of satin and ultra matte varnish. I was applying it regularly to everything that wasn't metallic just to keep it everything safe. It gives me a safe point. If I get metal paint where I don't want it, I can just scratch it away. Okay, so now let's make a base. So I want this to be a little urban and I want a building that looks like it's real big but is actually quite tiny. So I grabbed some extra Adeptus Titanicus little terrain bits I had for a project recently, like tiny barrels and tiny ladders. And the rest I'm just going to make look small through pipes and stuff like that. Laid down a nice base of cork. Notice that I'm constantly putting the miniature on and test fitting everything to make sure he's standing in the right place. So once that was done, we primed it up, based it up. Now we're just going to get it painted. The key is with this, notice how I'm using lots of different color and stuff like that in these early stages. That's because I'm going to end up washing all of this down, dry brushing over it. Never let your bases just be boring brown mud. Make something interesting there. Work color in. The world is rarely flat brown or flat gray. There are lots of interesting colors and things going on in the world. Try to capture that. So here I've used tons of red pigment in the earth to make it look like it's a cool iron pigment or something like that. I'm going to put orange streaks on the walls. I've got orange rust everywhere. I've got a little bit of blue hidden. Color and hue make things interesting, even bases. The time has finally come to put him all together. All the armor plates get taken out of their position zero and slowly applied. Now, because I've got paint over some of these areas where the connection joints are, I am gonna use super glue here to attach these. Uh, pay attention here while I screw things up and then have to pull the legs back off and assemble them in the correct place. Everybody makes mistakes, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I put them on backwards and then had to rip them off and reapply them. Everybody screws up sometimes. Notice how I'm going through the instructions to all my highlighted areas, working everything together, assembling that nice final miniature. Uh, this is a careful part, and what I'll say is I wasn't done actually after I assembled this. I had to go through, fix little minor details, do little tiny touch-ups. It takes 20, 30 minutes at the end, but with a big project like this, always spend those last few minutes touching everything up. It makes it all worth it. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a really fun project to do. It is a big project, but these big projects are so rewarding when you're all done with it. I hope you went, liked going on this journey with me, and I hope this helped with your own big projects. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got any questions, drop them down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.